summer meals, and farmer's markets. See how the two make a difference in Anne Arundel County, next on Food for Thought. Hi, I'm Jody Rissi, the host for Food for Thought, and thanks for watching. Today I'm honored to have two guests who are very familiar with Anne Arundel County Public Schools, especially Food and Nutrition Services. My first guest is Anheuser Bazelli, and she comes to us from the Department of Health for Anne Arundel County. She's a registered dietitian and a true advocate for the students that we serve. Welcome, Anne, to Food for Thought. Thanks, Jody. It's great to be here. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and just your role that you have um, at the Anne Arundel County Department of Health? Yes, I'm the Assistant Program Manager for Community Education and Health Equity at the department, and we focus on cancer and chronic disease prevention. So this includes um, outreach and education on topics including um, healthy eating, physical activity, tobacco use, cessation and prevention, and sun safety. And as a registered dietitian, I'm interested in food for health and food for fun. And you know, I can apply that every day to my work life, to my home life. I have a family at home that we love to get out and garden and be active. And I think these are, you know, sort of role model opportunities for us. And it's a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's the one thing that I say all the time about you. I mean, we truly love partnering with the Department of Health. Um, without question, we feel we're one. Um, we work together all the time. But the way you're able to role model and engage with students you know, in all of our schools and with administrators and with our external partners and our internal partners, it really is priceless. So you know, on behalf of Anne Arundel County Public Schools, thank you so much for making a difference for all of the kids that we serve. Thanks, I think we have a lot of fun. So at, you know, we're gonna talk today about summer meals and we're gonna talk about farmer's markets. And I think maybe for a viewer watching, they might say, you know, how do these two mix? Can you share with viewers, you know, what, um, looking at our county as a whole, kind of what is the status of access to healthy foods? Do we have fresh fruits and vegetables available throughout the county um, for our county residents to be able to enjoy and consume like they do in school meals? You know, that's a really good question. We had an epidemiologist at the department take available data and put it to a map. And what this map showed is where we have food deserts in our county. And a food desert is an area that doesn't have ready access to healthy and affordable foods. So this was really interesting and we were able to see where it was and that we actually had them and we want to raise awareness to that. So measures such as low income or how far a resident has to travel to a grocery store really helps us understand the challenges faced by approximately 69,000 residents in our county. Wow. You know, so this includes areas um, inside Brooklyn Park, Linthicum Heights, Jessup, uh, Severn, Glen Burnie, Fort Meade, and Eastport. Yeah, and I think um, when your division or when your um, when the Department of Health put together this map, the thing that we found so interesting, and I think you and I talked about it a lot, is the overlayment of here's where the need is, and that's where we were putting so much of our effort, right, mm -hmm. and so many of our programs. And I could remember both of us so excited about this map because it really painted a picture, and in some cases an unfortunate picture, right? We wanted to really concentrate our efforts in those areas of the mm -hmm. food desert. Mm -hmm. But I think it sparked interest for both of us. You know, it's really amazing when you can really take a visual look at something, and you, you all were already doing this in the schools where you see, and I'll use North, Northern Anne Arundel County as an example, where you have a food desert and you have all these schoolhouses that are providing lunch and summer meals and mobile meals. It's, as you said, it's the overlay of services where it's needed. And we saw um, our schools were doing breakfast, lunch. We now do um, our dinner program or our supper program, you know, after the students are dismissed. So if we have um, school-aged child care afterwards or a Taekwondo class, I mean, it's so nice that we could just extend our reach for that meal. We do Saturday meals and you know you coordinate with us on summer meals. Mm -hmm. So the need was there and I think it's so nice to see the partnership that we could both look at 
as well as with other partners and say, let's make a difference for the students in that area. So again, talking about just North County, right, or that Brooklyn Park area, it was the food desert, and we looked at it and we said, you know, obesity is a problem, and we worked together on that. And then we looked at hunger is a problem, and we worked together on that. You know, tell me a little bit about our discussions when we decided that's going to be the farmer's market, or that was the location that uh, would best meet the needs of the community. Well, you know, once you once you learn what the needs are of the community, then you know you can say, well, what what can we bring? What services? What programs? What opportunities? And again, they had a lot of these through school. And the idea about a summer farmers market really matched a lot of those needs to continue as you have the summer meals, but then to also have this access to fruits and vegetables where we know that if we need to fill half our plates with fruits and vegetables each and every meal, because we want those nutrients that our bodies need for health and for energy and to do the things we enjoy. So why not bring that to the community um, through a farmer's market where you can get um, fresh, great tasting, healthy f fruits and vegetables. And I think the colors of the rainbow are always key, right? We do mm -hmm. everything for tasting of the greens, tasting of the blues. Um, your blue looks great, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we always talk about all these different things, and then to be able to see that at the market was mm -hmm. just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, your division also did a, a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that, because, um, you know, we added a farmer's market, and I think you just said it's for the right reasons, right? Access to healthy um, foods we specifically had fresh fruits and fresh um, vegetables. Mm -hmm. We had so much more at the farmer's market. What else did we do at the market at Brooklyn Park Middle? Well, one of the things that we wanted to do is, is really expand and help people understand some of, not only to get it at a good cost and a good price, but also what to do with it and whether or not you liked it. So we had this really fun activity. We had lots of games with the activity, the. Um, scavenger hunt was to get kids looking at the different fruits and vegetables that the farmer had and what colors they were and of course we know that those different colors provide different nutrients that our growing kids need but also us as adults to stay healthy so that was a really fun activity and we had um, games and the, there was a story time and kids could take home free books and we had recipes and these were all ways to connect and interact with the community and have the, the conversation about produce and what how how you enjoyed it and we sampled every week that was a great opportunity kids tried things that they hadn't tried before and they really liked it and I think our you know our sampling was a great conversation starter because we could get people to try it without a lot of pressure. They just tried it and a lot of them realized they liked new things like yellow watermelon. Mm -hmm. That was a big hit. It was and a lot of fun. You know what I love is that we touched everybody, right? We had our youngest, youngest mm -hmm. community members there, right? Mm -hmm. Two-year-olds, three-year-olds, so excited to be involved in the activities and do the sampling, but we also had our seniors there. Mm -hmm. um, so the outreach and the difference you made on nutrition education, you know, for that whole community was really priceless. It was, it was great to see. It was great to see the excitement and the um, inquisitiveness, right, mm -hmm. of the community members asking, well, I've never tried yellow watermelon. What's it going to taste like? It was such a great location that we had our kids biking up and walking up every week and chatting with us and seeing what it is we had new. And it, uh, you're right, we had the senior center right down the street. Seniors came and they wanted to come and be a part of this community gathering that was so special. Um, the other thing that I think the viewers really need to know is your work with Schlegel Farms. So Schlegel Farms out of Waldorf, Maryland, they were our, our prime um, vendor. So he was our produce vendor. And you would work with them every week. So you would find out what are they going to bring to the market the next week. So you could coordinate all of your literature, your recipes. Um, it was so nice to watch, I think, all of us grow, right? Mm -hmm. um, everybody at the market pulling together to say, what's best for the farmer? What could he harvest today that we could have on their tables, you know, within that week and an easy recipe? Mm -hmm. They were colorful, they were easy, they were simple steps that you put together for them. So really, nutrition education at the finest. It was such a great partnership. Schlegel Farms, they were so interested in providing the community a variety of fruits and vegetables. You know, and they really wanted to work with us and with the community. 
um, they were they had brought uh, tomatillos to mm -hmm. the market and we said that would be fantastic let's get some recipes in with tomatillos some really easy things that families can do and incorporate and the farmers had so much information about it too about how easy it is to grow or how to use it the conversations were uh, of the nutrition education and how to cook also came from the farmer which was Mm -hmm. Amazing. I mean, he would even share the harvesting part of it, right? I mean, they would tell us when it was the right, you know, for that product, like when the uh, the skin, I guess I'm calling it the skin, but mm -hmm. that outside was just getting a little bit dried was the perfect time. So I think we learned um, yes, we as well as he. And I think he enjoyed that us with our dietitian hats on, um, looked at it one way and he as our farmer and really cultivating the community of wellness that mm -hmm. we were doing. Um, it was perfect to have the, the partnership there. I know you mentioned some of his products, but what else did he offer this summer? Because it was huge. And I think your family particularly really liked one of the products. Yes, we we had so much fun every week seeing, it was a large variety of fruits and vegetables. And you know, this, a lot of summer favorites like corn and watermelon and um, tomatoes and squash, yellow and green. There was so much variety to choose from and everybody had their favorites. But one of my best examples is we had got kale one uh, week and my daughter had loved it so much. She said, next week I'm using my own money to buy kale so we can have kale. And we made kale chips, which is super easy. You just throw them in the oven um, with some olive oil, salt and pepper and they crisp up really nicely, but it's such a great snack. Uh, but she was very determined. And that was an impact that we had on our family. This, um, us buying and being uh, part of the market, we bought more fruits and vegetables. We already eat a lot, but we incorporated more in different items. And it was a great learning experience for our own family too. Yeah, it was nice to see your daughter and husband there and your mom. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the support, uh, is invaluable you know to mm -hmm. us in, in trying to start a market for the first time we knew it was going to be hard you know mm -hmm. that we would have to get that community members and we really had to communicate it so um, you know again your family support and you being such a great role model really just is um, fantastic to see at the at the market we only have a few minutes left so let's talk about the partners because I think it was vast I mean I think Department of Health and Anne Arundel County Public Schools definitely led the march, right? So mm -hmm. we jointly work together, but there's other partners that helped us and they were there every step of the way. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, definitely the partnership with the farmers, Schlegel Farms really came through. They were there every week, full force, providing this wonderful produce and working with the community, developing relationships. They were, the community was so thankful. They thanked these farmers every single week and were sad to see them go at the end of market. But we also had Department of Aging and Disabilities. They came out several times and distributed their farmers market nutrition program coupons. And also, uh, Maryland Farmers Market Association, they hired a community member to serve as the market manager to provide the Maryland market money match. So anybody using their WIC, uh, EBT, SNAP, or Farmers Market Nutrition Program coupons, both WIC and senior, they would get a match. So that was really important. And also we had a lot of, a lot of other support, Anne Arundel County Rec and Parks, we had um, the uh, Northern Anne Arundel County Chamber of Commerce came out. We had a lot of great help, even next door neighbors, like the Chesapeake Center for Arts, or Chesapeake Arts Center, I apologize, and our friends at the health department who had a site down there, their family came every week. So mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a lot of great support. And that's what a market um, can be. It can be a community hub of interaction and support uh, for the residents. I, it really was a destination, and I think um, our partners in Anne Arundel County that were always there, you know, our media, media specialist um, or digital media specialist, they were fantastic because they had the books set up according to age, remember? Mm -hmm. And just to see our youngest learners go right to a book and pick up the book that they associated with so close, and they had read alouds and coloring and, you know, kind of fueling your body for fun and activity, but really that um, enrichment, right? Mm -hmm. That growth mindset throughout the summer was perfect. And every week they came, they got to take home a book for free. Mm -hmm. The kids were so excited about that to have a new book. It really was. So thank you. I know one other member that we didn't talk about, but she's the next guest, is the Maryland State Department of Education. So thank you again. I'm thrilled about the farmer's market. Thanks, Jody.
Don't go away. I'll be right back with Aaron Kennedy Heisem from the Maryland State Department of Education, and we're going to continue to talk about summer meals and farmers markets. I'm Corporal Gamble with the Anne Arundel County Police. In regards to school safety, there are certain items that are not allowed in school. Weapons, anything that can be construed as a weapon, cannot be brought to school. Things like switchblades, knives, anything with a sharp point, uh, fingernail files, guns of any sort cannot be brought to school. Also illegal drugs, prescription drugs, unless they are issued by the health room, cannot be brought to school. Tobacco products of any sort, alcohol, anything of that nature is not something that you can have in school. Welcome back, and thanks for staying tuned to Food for Thought. We talked a lot about um, farmers markets in the first segment. Now we're gonna talk about more partnerships and summer meals. I'm honored to have my next guest, who's Erin Kennedy Heisum, and she's from the Maryland State Department of Education, truly a partner to us in Anne Arundel County. Welcome, Erin, to Food for Thought. Thanks, Jody. I'm excited to be here. Can you tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and the huge role that you have at the Maryland State Department of Education? Sure, I'd be happy to. I am a registered dietitian, and I work at the State Department of Education in the Office of School and Community Nutrition Programs. So our office oversees the federal child nutrition programs, everything from school breakfast to summer meals. Personally, I do a lot of outreach and a lot of work with our partners, the school systems, our uh, nonprofit partners, other government agencies. I also am responsible for the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program and one of my favorite programs, the Farm to School. And I think that's something where we work so closely all the time. Um, and again, I think just for a viewer watching, I love having the resource with Maryland State Department of Education. Um, I don't hesitate to pick up the phone, and you're always there um, to throw an idea past you, um, just to say, hey, come on out and see what we're doing. You know, let us know how it's working. Um, you know, give us feedback on what we're doing for any of those programs, right? Because we do all of them now. So as our programs grow, I love having you there just as a resource. So thank you, and thank you for always being a role model. Um, oh, well, thank you. I mean, I love working with you and your team and all of your partners, the Department of Health, and all your partners throughout the county. You guys really bring a lot of excitement to child nutrition and test a lot of innovative ideas, and you're never scared to take a new thing on and just to go the extra mile. Well, thank you. Um, we appreciate that, and, and we do. We feel so close together as a county with all the agencies, and we definitely feel that you are right there side by side with us. Oh, great. So we talked about the farmer's market. I know you were able to be with us at the farmer's market, but let's switch a little bit to summer meals. Um, and just so the viewers can hear, tell us, you know, I guess across the state, what do summer meals look like and um, how do they look even across the country? And then I could talk a little bit about Anne Arundel County's numbers. Sure, well, the summer food service program is a really important child nutrition program. We know that during the school year, children who might be at risk for food insecurity they are, have access to school breakfast and school lunch. But during the summer, those programs go away. So the Summer Food Service Program works to fill that gap to ensure that children are well nourished over the summer so they return to school ready to learn. The program operates in every county in Maryland. We have about 45 sponsors across the state that are running the program in a variety of different ways, from serving meals at schools, to parks, to community centers, libraries, and now in farmers markets. Yeah, and um, some mobile meals. Mobile meals as well. Right, mm -hmm. so I think in, we've kind of dabbled in all of them because we have them at camps. We have it in our school sites. We do mobile meals. Um, and the farmer's market really was, I think, um, we won't talk about it yet, but I know I think it was just an awesome project of ours to kind of pull the summer meals and that farmer's market together. Um, how do you see the meals changing? I know we work together on a lot of that farm to summer, farm to school initiatives. So how do you see, um, I think they've always been healthy hands down. As both of us, you know, registered dietitians and moms of students, um, we know they're healthy, but they just keep getting better. They do, they really do. And I have to give all the credit to you and your team and to all the food service directors and um, sponsors who run these programs across the state. Because every year you're increasing the amount of fresh produce, you're increasing the amount of whole grains being offered, and what excites me, you're buying from Maryland farmers and you're buying from local sources. So the kids are not only having access to healthy food, but they're having access to healthy food that's grown in their own backyard. And that's something you were able to witness mm -hmm. um, over the summer at the farmer's market. So we were able to talk to Schlegel Farms, and again, they're our farmer that we buy from year round. So they procure, the, or Coastal Sunbelt procures from them and then they sell it to us. And it was so nice to say to him, how's the harvest look? 
you know, what's going to be the harvest of this week? And we knew it was, you know, harvested on the farm. It went to Coastal Sun Belt to our schools within days. And I think you were privy to see that right there at Brooklyn Park Middle. It was great. And one of the most exciting things about your farmer's market and your working with Schlegel Farms is that the children get them during the summer, but they also get them during the school year. Mm -hmm. So you collaborate year round with him, which is just so exciting. Yeah, and uh, we actually spoke not long ago of looking at our items like our butternut squash. So a winter squash, how can he plant more and be prepared more for the volume that we use? Because it's on our menu all the time and it's been for years. Mm -hmm. So it's so nice to be able to have that partnership um, with many farmers now, um, many, many of them in Maryland, as well as we do have some in Delaware. We still feel that's very close. It's 100 miles away. It's Absolutely. 125 miles away. But it's nice to have that partnership, and they know we want to buy for our students, and they're willing to plant for us. So really, really a, a nice tie. Now, when we look at summer meals, I think they always say, how do we reach out to the communities? Um, how do we promote? How do we do those kinds of things? You're very good at that. Um, <laughs> so tell the viewers a little bit of how do you look at it as a state agency? Um, I know we do it as a county as well. And then how did we do something differently with the farmer's market um, versus maybe what you see around the state? Well, I think it's important for people to know that we are always thinking summer meals in Maryland. So even though the program may only operate for June, July, and August, we are planning and preparing and doing outreach and assessing needs and setting goals all year round. And we're bringing in a variety of partners from the state to the local level to get the word out. So we do a lot of traditional media sources. We do a lot of social media. You're excellent at Twitter now, Jody. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're learning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do radio ads and bus ads. And we really want the community to know that these meals are available to them. And I think the beautiful thing about the farmer's market, it had that community focus. So it really was for the community, by the community, and it showed to the neighborhood that Anne Arundel County Public Schools as well as the Department of Health, we're here for you. We're here to help you and ensure that you have what you need. And as you recall, Brooklyn Park Middle has always been an open summer site. So the community of Brooklyn Park was always able to walk up to our site and have meals, summer meals. So when we looked at that map, the food environment map that Ann talked about earlier, where was our pocket? Where was our food desert? Where do we have an open site already that is accessible to the community? It was a perfect fit. And I know you've witnessed over the summer, we would see families come up and they were really there to buy produce. But when we were able to say, go ahead in and have a free meal, um, the connection definitely hit. And I think it was wonderful that they saw it, they bought it at the market, but their child was tasting it at school lunch. Absolutely. I believe you said earlier it was, you know, you had infants to seniors there. There was everybody there. So you had children doing taste tests with Anne and the Department of Health. You had children reading books. And then, like you said, you were able to go in and see those items prepared and served on a, on a meal. How, um, what are some other innovative ideas that you're seeing across the state? I know us with the farmer's market, we thought that was very innovative, and we hope it continues. Um, we really hope that on that food environment map, our Brooklyn Park Middle Farmer's Market is going to be a staple for Anne Arundel County residents. But what are some other um, interesting twists and ideas that other counties are doing? Well, we have seen um, meals, summer meals served at existing markets before. So in Baltimore City, they have some farmer's markets that they're now bringing the meals to. We've seen summer meals being served in conjunction with community or school gardens. So oftentimes over the summer, school garden might not have anyone take care of it. Well, moving the summer meal site to a school garden location gives a little bit of programming, activity for the children to do, then get their hands in the dirt, really understand where their food is coming from. We've seen a lot of collaborations with, say, the Orioles or different sports teams, um, and different community partners being involved from the Salvation Army to Parks and Recreation and making it a community-based program. And I think that's the joy of, you know, our after-school meals, so meals that are, um served on Saturdays and after the school day, the traditional school day, or the summer meals. It really is more community focused. And the more internal and external partners that we bring to the table, it just blossoms and it, it truly makes the program so much more rich than it could be um, as a single agency by themselves. Now with summer meals, I know nutritionally, um, there's a person on staff now too looking at you know the fresh items and there's gonna be um, some compiled data to share with all the directors, because we all talk, mm -hmm. right? To look at um, how healthy the meals are and how we um, just extend what we do during the school day or the school year into the summer. Statistically, our numbers went down a little bit you know, this past year, which is fine. Um, we keep doing more outreach and looking at our pockets. 
Um, what are other ways, like if a, a parent was watching and they say, where is Emil? Like, or how do I know if I'm gonna be in Baltimore County? So on a state level, you can look at mdsummermeals.org, and that is a statewide website where you can plug in your address and they'll show you the closest summer meal site. You can also contact your school district's food and nutrition service office. They are all involved or they can direct you to where in the county you can be to get a summer meal. And are any others doing um, public and private? We talked a little bit about that before the show because our farmer feels um, in Anne Arundel County that was one unique, um, I guess, connection or partnership that we had because we know that he coming for the market, he still had to be, he has to sustain his industry, right? His mm -hmm. job. Um, I think that was a nice part that we together looked at, you know, lack of food access, lack of healthy items, lack of fruits and vegetables, and having our, our nonprofit or our public agencies with him as the private really um, heightened our experience, I guess, for our children. Right. We have to keep in mind, while we want to have our children eat Maryland grown and local products and understand, it has to be beneficial to the farmer, too. We're supporting local economies, and we want to make sure that the farmer is able to sell products at a fair cost to him so that he can continue to grow his business. So I think that public-private partnership has been such a success here and elsewhere across the state. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting to see with our farmers how many years, mm -hmm. right? Um, 150 years in business, and it's just fourth generation, fifth generation farmers, so it really, um, I don't know, the dedication is there, and when you see him, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Schlegel, with that vested interest in that community that we served, um, it really makes a difference. I think it touched his heart as well as all of ours. Absolutely. Each and every day at the market. Um, our reading part was pretty special, too. Um, tell the viewers a little bit about what you saw when you were at the market with our, our youngest readers going up and working with our media specialist. I can't stress enough how this market really embodied everything that we want the Summer Food Service Program to be. It not only nourished the children and provided healthy options for them to eat, but it worked to target some of that summer learning loss. It gave children access to books, and we have to remember not every home has books in it. So the children were able to come and work with the media specialists. They could sit down on a little picnic blanket in the grass, have a story be read to them. Then they could pick out books for their grade level that they were interested in. They could take the books home with them, all at no cost. And it was just a really um, holistic way to nourish the mind and the body. Yeah, and uh, truly a destination, right? Truly and a I know Anna and I have said that over and over again. It was a destination for you to go in the summer. So come, you can shop, you can have free summer meals, you can read some books, or you can color. There was always an enrichment, another external partner there. So it really, uh, cultivating communities of wellness, that said it all right there at the farmer's market. Right. Well, again, thank you for coming in. I think it's been so important of our partnerships, the internal and the external partnerships that we have in Anne Arundel County and across the state. And I know you're truly uh, the key ingredient to have all this work for us and for others across the state. Well, we love working with you and we can't wait to see what you're going to do next year. Good. We're excited. <laughs> As you can see, the partnership between um, Anne Arundel County Department of Health, the Maryland State Department of Education, and many other partners is really alive and well in Anne Arundel County. This summer, we were really able to capitalize on a free summer meal site and a farmer's market. And together, we knew we created healthy students, healthy schools, and we cultivated communities of wellness. If you have any questions about the school meals program, you can call me at any time at 410-222-5900. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time on Food for Thought.